What's good, y'all, and welcome to my review of the Equalizer 3. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I finally, welcome finally to got around episode. to watching this fucking the movie. <laughs> it took a while, man, for me to find the time to sit down, so, pull this film up on Netflix, and give it the watch, man, because you guys know I was really excited for this movie, man, because you guys know how much I love the Equalizer 1 and 2. And, so yeah, I was excited for this one. Didn't end up getting catch, yeah, didn't end up getting the cat, the, didn't end up getting the chance to see this movie in theater, Jesus Christ, I cannot fucking speak today. But yeah, man, finally saw it, man, and overall, man, I love the film, man. I will say, this is, I know this is also me going, purely going on my memory, I think I like The Equalizer 2 a bit more than this one, man, but I think I might put this over the original Equalizer. I don't know, I don't know, because I haven't watched either of these films in years, man, so my opinions might change if I ever go back to rewatch them, man, but, uh, yeah, this movie was amazing, man, I love this one, and you've got, and, um, if this is end up being the last Equalized movie, which you guys know, I, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this, uh, in my trailer reactions, that I, that I treat each Equalized movie like it's the last one, because I don't know, that, and there's also just such a long gap between each movie, I don't know if there's ever going to be another one, you know, so I was like, so, so I always treat each one, I thought Equalizer 2 was going to be like the last Equalizer, movie. okay, okay, we got a second one, that's it, oh, we got a third one, fantastic, and you know, who knows, we might get a fourth one, I don't know, we might get a fourth one, we might not, this might be the end of it, it'll be a trilogy, I don't know, if there is another one, man, cool, I will be there to watch it, man, but the way this movie ended makes me feel like this is probably going to be the final one, Although, I, now that I think about it, I think 1 and 2 had similar endings, too, now that I think about it. <laughs> I think they both had similar endings, but maybe I'm wrong. But, um, yeah, man, so anyway, anyway enough me rambling, let's just jump right to the movie. It's directed by Antone Fuqua, if I'm saying his name right. I'm probably saying his first name wrong. And, of course, stars Denzel Washington, Dakota Fan Fanning, Sonia Arm, 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 if I'm saying that right, Gia S Scotterano, <laughs> David Denman, and many more, and the plot of The Equalizer 3. <laughs> I know I butcher all his name. Since giving up his life as a government assassin, Robert McCall finds solace in serving justice on behalf of the oppressed. Now living in Southern Italy, he soon discovers his new friends are under the control of the local crime bosses. As events turn deadly, McCall becomes their protector by taking over, by taking on the mafia. First off, man, the cast is great. As always, Denzel Washington is incredible, man. You guys know how much love I love Denzel. He's arguably my favorite actor working today, man. I love his movies, man. He was amazing, his movie, man. No lie, bro. Denzel, man. Denzel, he is low. He is like the coldest motherfucker around. Because obviously, you know, he has done so many other movies like Training Day and all that. But like, yo, Robert in this movie, man. Bro, this is probably the coldest he ever been like, and he's had his cold moments, man, throughout the previous two films. But man, this man takes up to a whole new level in the third one, man. This man is just the coldest motherfucker walking, man. It was so fucking awesome, bro. The ending, especially that old final showdown, bro. Not gonna lie, that whole thing to put this movie up, raise this movie up, gave this movie like a half a point increase than what it was gonna be. Gave it a point, a, a, a point five increase in my score. No lie, just because how good it was, man. And like, <laughs> Man was cold during that man. He's like, ugh, such awesome man. Okay, Dakota Fanning, she's great. Um, Dakota Fanning, excuse me, um, was great as well in the handful of times she's in the movie. Oh, she's not in the movie as much as I thought she was gonna be. She's only in like a, f a handful of scenes, and only shares like maybe three minutes. with Denzel well, actually, which I was a little disappointed by because well, you guys may remember well, years and years ago these two did actually were co-stars for the movie The Man on Fire back in '04, which actually. I don't know if I ever mentioned this on video, but you guys, if you, got, if you guys, of course, saw me, me on Twitter and Instagram and of and Letterbox as well, I should say, because, you know, that's where I log all my movies. Uh, you guys yeah. may have already known that I actually, around the time this movie got announced, or rather when it started filming, we got those set photos with, like, Dakota, with Dakota and Denzel ambulance. reunite along with the director, that I put, that I went back and rewatched Man, or not rewatched, because I had seen him before, watched Man, of, uh, Man on Fire for the first time, because I think it was on HBO Max at the time. I saw it was on there, I was like, okay, let me give this a watch, you know, in anticipation for the Equal Ivory, and I gotta say that. That movie is fucking amazing, man. If you got, like, definitely check me out, man. Denzel is incredible in there, man. It's very 2000s with the way it's edited, man. The editing is very 2000s. It's definitely very much of its time with its editing, man. But I think that's what gives the movie its charm. And it is a fantastic movie in general, man. There was, there's actually one scene that makes me kind of wonder if that was meant, to, if, there, if it was supposed to be, like, a bit of a nod to Man on Fire. Because you guys remember in Man on Fire, there was this whole series around the beginning part of the movie, right before uh, Dakota's character gets kidnapped fully and he has to go and search and search all over like Mexico or wherever they were. Um, where they took it was either Mexico or Spain, I can't remember. It was some Spanish speaking country. 
um, where she gets kidnapped and he has to go after her and he's like a drunk like like a drunk ex like FBI agent or something I forget the exact plot but there's this one scene where he's like where he's like where he, where he killed where he tries to kill himself like puts his gun to his head and like try and he like kind of like going back and forth whatever to do and then he goes for it but the, but like his gun I think either his gun jammed or or it was just empty man and there was another scene like that where after where after Denzel gets shot earlier on in the movie by some kid he like puts his gun in his head looks like he's about to kill himself but it ends up but he was out of bullets I don't know man that could have just been coincidence but it kind of reminded me of that one scene from Man on Fire I don't know if it was meant to be a tribute or a reference to that movie or not, but that's why I know that. I was over there maybe snuck in a reference to the movie somewhere between Dakota and Denzel's, you know, dialogue they had me, but I didn't catch any. I don't know if there were. <laughs> which, you know, which also one other thing, man, before we continue onward, that I found hilarious. Movie. Like, I find it so funny that, you know, since 04, man, you know, of course, Dakota, she's all grown up now. She was like a little kid throughout the movie, man. Now she's a fully grown adult woman, adult woman. And Denzel has barely aged a day since 2004. <laughs> <laughs> like, man, damn near looks the same as he did in Man on Fire, man. I just find that funny. Hey, man, as the old saying goes, black don't crack. <laughs> anyway, yeah, enough of me randomly, but just if you have not seen Man on Fire, go watch it. It's an amazing movie, man. Very 2000s, but that's what gives it its charm, man. Check it out if you haven't already. I don't know if HBO Max still has or on some other streaming service or whatnot, but give it a watch if you guys haven't already. Buy, buy it on Blu-ray for all I care about. Just watch it. Anyway, the rest of the catalog was great as well, man. Um, ex now, I will say that the villains, the mafia bosses that uh, Robert goes up against, man, I think these were probably my favorite villains that we've gotten in the series so far. Like, in the Evil Legend, I had some pretty good villains. I remember enjoying the villains that were in the first movie as well. Simple, but I kind of like the mafia guys in this one movie. They are just they are just so evil, man. They are just so, un, uh, you know, unredeemable, man. They very, they, they very much, you know, fit the bill, man. They were just great villains, man. They were great villains throughout the movie, man. I really enjoyed that. I think, like I said, I think they might the best villains we've got in these films so far. Another thing I love about the movie, man, is Jeez. that the is that the the village or the city or the town, wherever you call this place, the movie predominantly takes place in, it feels like its own character itself. The town itself and its people feels like very feels very lived in, man. You really feel the sense of community that this film that the film tries to portray with the village that he with this town that he is uh, currently in in Italy. And I think they're portrayed well, very well in the film, man. Shut the fuck up, phone. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Phones out here giving the uh, phones out here blasting me. Anyway, but uh, yeah, I thought the sense of community came out very well, came out very uh, organic, and I could really, you could really feel the sense of community while watching the film of this in the of this little town in Italy, and that they are definitely one massive community. Man, I like this. I like that man. I like that the that community felt like a, that the, the, that the town itself felt like its own individual, like its own character in and of itself throughout the film. Also, I gotta say, the director of this movie is really good, man. Like I think I've never, I don't think I've seen any more of uh, Antoine. Uh, is it Antoine and Antoni uh, Antoine whatever how you pronounce his first name man uh, other films oh wait, he actually directed Training Day <laughs> oh shit he actually directed all three of the Equalizer movies man I just uh, I didn't know I didn't know he also did Training I'm looking at it right now oh he even did the Magnificent uh, Seven remake from 2016 man I remember actually really liking that movie man but I did not know this dude also did uh, Training Day which I'm looking forward. To that new, like, I think they're working on, like, a re- uh, No, they're working on, like, a prequel. Is it still gonna star Denzel, well, man? I guess it's a younger version of himself, which can work. The dude's yeah. barely eight, so it's not like they're gonna have to de-age him that much. But, damn, I did not know he directed the other ones as well, and he also did Training Day, man. That's fucking awesome. I love those movies. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked, man. His directed movie was, was really good, man. I There was this one sequence in particular that I really liked, man, where it kind of, like, zooms into his eye. First of all, I like that we actually finally got some connective tissue between the movies, finally, because... Uh, the Equalizer 2 feels very disconnected from Equalizer 1, like their own, like their own, their own self-contained movies, not really sequels to one another, man. Like, there was next to no com uh, connective tissue between movies, at least that I can remember. But here, they actually give you a flashback back to the Equalizer 2, which I thought was nice, and we finally got some connective tissue. But anyway, during that sequence, man, the camera zooms in on, 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 on Denzel's eye, and in, 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 in his eye, they play flashbacks. Not only that, but him with, like, this first-person view of him killing all the people in, like, this winery that was facing off with the Star Movie Man, where he does... Where he's like chilling out in the way, like with like the light behind him, it's on the poster and everything, man. He's like, I feel sorry for his family. That whole scene, man, which looked amazing, by the way, man. I love the POV shot they went with that, with that man. And once again, the, chore the choreography of the fights are fantastic. Man. This movie is also gory as fuck. Like, I'm pretty sure the first two would have their have their gore as well. I'm pretty sure they did, but I don't know, man. I feel like three definitely up to definitely up the ante a little bit with the gore, man. This movie is brutal, man. There are some really gory kills this way, man, which. I 
obviously you guys know me I uh, love my gore so I was obviously left a very happy man and again uh, yeah, his directing was great man I really like the I like, I like what he did with this movie man and um, yeah the music is also great as well man I love the music for the movie I thought the, like the theme itself I don't know if it's like the theme of the movie or not but like there's this one track that like plays that they play a few handful of times that I really love it, it, like the sound the, the, the sound of it is very similar to like the beat of Kanye song I am a guy that you know that whole thing like I am a guy no 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 not I am a guy it's Black Clans but that's the song what the oh, hell was that song called Black, was it Black Clans or something? Yeah, Whatever yeah. that song, that was it was in Suicide Squad. Yeah, you know that song, man. That song, it reminds me a lot of the of the of the, uh, the instrumental for that song, man. I don't know if it is the same ones or not, but it reminded me a lot of one, and I thought that song sounded amazing. This, the rest of the OS, the rest of the soundtrack, I thought sounded pretty good as well. Now, as far as negatives I had with the film, man. Uh, first of all, um, I, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in my trailer reaction to the movie that I wasn't really vibing with or feeling the color grade of this movie which it felt which was very gray a uh, very gray color uh, color gray i would say that it wasn't really i don't know if i was gonna like it man when i was watching the trails man but after watching the movie man yeah i'm not really um vibing with it it does look pretty good in parts like um the whole opening sequence of the winery that we start on, man, that one looks pretty cool. Especially that shot when, you know, uh, when when he, when Denzel's like behind, is like in front of the sunlight, man, by the barrel, man. That one looks really cool, man. But the rest of it felt it felt a little too gray, a little too dark. I would prefer it was a little bit more colorful, me personally. And also, like I mentioned, for um, Dakota and not having much screen time, man, and also not having much screen time with Denzel. Like I said, we would like for them to have a little bit more interactions together, man, than they end up, uh, having, but. Regardless of stuff, man, this is a fantastic movie, man. If you like the previous two extras, NFL, Equalized Movie, man, definitely go check this movie out if you have not already. And, uh, yeah, man, overall, my favorite rating movie is going to be a 9.5 out of 10, guys. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. You leave a like if you did, subscribe if you're new. Follow me on social if you like it. Links after us below. And it's always coming out for more. See you guys next time.